Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail, a brand new game which just exited early access and uh, is sort of officially launched now uh, on April 7th of 2021. This is going to be the third battle in the British campaign that we're going to be playing here. Uh, we fought the tutorial battle and did not do well. Uh, we accomplished it, we succeeded in our mission, but we didn't capture any of the ships that I think everybody always captures successfully. And so that that just happened. Um, we fought the first land battle uh, in our last uh, yesterday, uh, and uh, that battle went reasonably well. We lost quite a few troops, but I think that's pretty normal for that particular fight. We won the battle in any event. And we're about to go into the next battle in the campaign, which is a naval battle against enemy forces that I believe are much stronger than us. And the real objective in this battle, I believe, is just to save your merchant ship, uh, perhaps letting your, your, your warships get destroyed in the process. Uh, you can still win the mission that way, I believe. Uh, we have two ships currently under our control. We've got a six-rate uh, Cerebrus-class Corvette, uh, which has 28 six-pound Armstrong guns on her, so pretty lightly armed ship. Six-pounders are very small for a naval gun. And then we have the HMS Sean Mac, which is, or sorry, uh, HMS Butcher is the name of that ship. And then we have the HMS Sean Mac, which is a 18 gun, six pound Armstrong uh, armed seventh rate brig. Uh, so an even smaller warship. The brig is commanded by Lieutenant Jean Lapont. Could you rename any of these guys? Because that would be cool if you could. Doesn't look like it. I would love to rename some of these guys. In any event, you can't rename him. And uh, the HMS Butcher is commanded by uh, Horatio Nelson, which is my particular character. So, with that being said, that's the situation that we find ourselves in right now. Do we want to add anything to our ship? Like copper sheathing or anything? Lightweight hull reduces armor thickness but increases capacity. Don't want to do that. I, I want to make my ships be able to take more damage, if anything. Although more speed would also be a good a good trait to have. The problem is all these things, at least the copper sheathing takes 51 tons. I only have nine tons of excess weight. Um, armor plus 20 for the hammocks. So actually that's not a bad idea. It doesn't add any additional weight. Although no, that reduces am uh, sorry, that reduces armor by 20%. So we could go with uh, Hardened Hull, but that would have us overloaded. Lightweight gun carriages? Oh, well that's nice. They're expensive, but that actually reduces the weight on the hull quite considerably. We'll do that. We can fit two upgrades on this particular ship. And I can do a, an, up, an armored hull. So that's nice. I don't have enough cannons on any of these other types, with the exception of like the lighter four pound Armstrong gun uh, to, to upgrade to. So probably not what we want to do there. The Sean Mac already has a hardened hull. So both of these ships should be able to take slightly more damage. The Butcher can make 7.4 knots. The Sean Mac 9.7, at least that's what I'm assuming that speed is. And uh, we currently have $3,600. We do have quite a few land weapons we could sell for some more cash. We've got 10 four-pound army brass cannons that we could sell also. But I'm not going to do any of that right now just because I don't need the money desperately at the moment. Um, what I will do is perhaps before the next fight... I don't think any of this stuff will... Do we want to do the double... Combination of increased ammunition stores, gun maintenance methods, and crew training provides the option to use double shot in close quarters. Do we want to double shot that? I guess we might as well research it. We don't have to use it. We could also do double charge. So we're spending reputation points on some of this tech here to research double charge and double shotted guns. Don't the six and nine pound naval guns, you can have better weight per damage.
Oh, those are upgrades I have to put on ships, so I don't... I've got to actually do the double shotgun. Lame. It does have weight. Whatever. It'll be useful at some point in time, if not right now. Um... I'll hold those prisoners for now. Thank you. All right, so we've got one optional sort of battle here on the coast we could assign a ship to. And then we've got this battle has two ships, right? Well, we can have up to three. I don't have three ships. All right. Um, let's go ahead and fight this battle. HMS Whirlpool is carrying vital supplies for a battered fleet docked at Belize. Without these supplies, we will be reduced to quarter rations. The Spanish are aware of our desperate situ supply situation and have sent several patrols to search for our ship. With our main fleet being repaired, the Spanish have an overwhelming advantage in the region. Our only hope is to avoid them, and thankfully, frequent skulls, squalls have kept us hidden so far. If you have the mis if you have the misfortune to encounter the enemy ships, your only hope will be to delay them long enough for the Whirlpool to escape to safety, and then retreat with your remaining ships. Oh, so we could change our strategy. We can do a distraction maneuver, which reduces the amount of money and reputation. We can follow the orders, or we can go with fight the power. Gives us more money and reputation. Does that impact how much shipping they have? You had a friggin' two six rates for this one, Sean Mac. It increases the ship level. Or decreases. I kinda wonder if we should do the distraction maneuver. It'll call it'll reduce the amount of money we get and reputation. But we're pretty weak at this stage in the campaign. I guess we can always follow the orders and then and then figure out what to uh, load the save and redo it again if we fail. That is an option. If at first you don't succeed, fail, fail again. All right, so we're going to send in two ships, 46 guns, 468 crew against what looks like three Spanish ships. We also have the Walpool, which is our cargo ship. The recaptured merchantman is carrying vital supplies, so we are accompanying her to ensure she can rejoin the rest of our fleet. The heavy rain prevented us from detecting the enemy until they nearly are on top of us. The only good news is that they appear to just be just as surprised as us. We're heavily outnumbered and outgunned. Our only chance is to run and hope that we can lose them in the storm. See, I don't think that's true. All these enemy ships only have 60 crew members. We can easily, if we can board them, we can win this easy. I don't agree with that. All ahead forwards. Alright, so the two enemy ships ahead of us... I mean, they're not even larger ships than us. These guys are pretty small ships. So normal difficulty on this mission doesn't seem to be too hard. The ship back here looks like it has more guns, but I still think my six raid is better than anything these guys have. The wall pool. All right, so the Sean Mac and the Butcher are sailing in formation. You can see this line here indicates the Sean Mac is following us. We've got the wind almost directly behind us. They're turning into us to try and... Uh... All right, Sean Mac, you're going to be my boarding party because you're so damn fast. The Butcher's our gun platform to weaken them. And then the wall pool, you're just going to kind of fall in behind. Where do we have to get? We have to get to the opposite side of the map. I could just sail the wall pool out that way on its own, but the enemy ship in the rear would, is, is a problem. Can't just avoid that. Can we set her sails to full, though? Taking some damage. I can't I can't bear get my guns to bear on these guys. Should 
Tron Man, can you cut these guys off? I think you've got the wind gauge. Or the weather gauge. The butcher's barely moving. What kind of wind do we have? At least it feels like she's barely moving. Oh well, Sean Mac, you're gonna you're gonna be engaging these guys on your own by the looks of it. You're firing. I guess you can now. Nice, it's kind of a long range rake, but you got a rake in there. Meanwhile, the enemy looks like. Well, I don't know if you can engage that lead ship, the Libera, but you might be able to engage the the ship behind it if we continue on this course. Grapple and engage. Make full sail. You're at least pushing them out so that they're further away from the wall pool, which is heading directly for the objective. Butcher, you're going to turn a little bit to try and engage the Libra action, or Libra Akon, or however you pronounce that. Engage the near ship. Sean Mack is moving to engage or to to board. I don't understand why you need a parallel course to board. That you should be able to board over the bow. In any event, if you can actually get to that proper angle. They're firing long range at the wall pool, but. God damn it, they broke free. Grapple with these boys. Kind of got the angle. Although not the wind. Wait, 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 wait. Grapple. You're right there. Grapple. No. Uh, and you can't, you're, you're angling directly into the wind, so you're not going to swing that. All right, close and broadside here on the Libre Action. He's firing on the wall pool also. He's trying to make a move for the edge of the map. All right, where ship? I don't think the Sean Mac is going to be fast enough to catch these guys if they, if they really get going. Good news is the wall pool suffered very little damage so far, but my, my real objective in this battle has to be to take some enemy ships, I think. Long range broadside against the Libra. Looks like we got one hit on her. Because I don't have enough firepower here, and I've got to... I probably these ships are largely worthless in terms of these enemy ships but what we could get is some extra cash for selling them make full sail try and board the reaction yeah they're trash but when you have nothing else Fair point. Angle a bit, Sean Mack. They're coming up behind the stern of our cargo ship. But you've got a pretty good 
chance, I think, to defeat the Santa Eugenia. Long range gunfire on the wall pool. She's making 5.9 knots. Take a little bit more angle there. The butcher's closing in. Look at the size of the, the size difference on these ships. Killed one of the crew members there. Firing some volleys here with our uh, crew. Closing in. Prepare to throw grappling irons or whatever. What are you shooting at? Libra. All right, actually, Walpole, I want you to come back to the right. The way the enemy is going to have to turn to catch you. And they're going to have to go past the Sean Mac. That'll get the Sean Mac back in the fight. Keep a parallel course. The distance is pretty good. I think if I just let them continue to ram, maybe. Maybe if we turn off a little bit to the right, we'll get to that parallel course. Distance is good. Speed's a little bit off. God damn it. No! I hate how finicky boarding is. One of the things I really enjoyed about the Talon Soft Age of Sail game was just how, like, the game's pretty honest about the fact that, like, two ships crash into each other, you can immediately start a boarding action. You don't have to frickin' dock a spaceship to board shipping. Also, ships don't strike their flags enough with regards to, um, ships don't strike their flags enough with regards to damage inflicted by guns. Very, way too often do they sink. But I think we've got her, lads. You can see we've got the grappling irons here across. We're boarding her. She's a goner. Meanwhile, the Sean Mac is coming up on the stern of the wall pool. Nice and, nice and safe here. So if the enemy wants to get to the wall pool, they're going to have to go in between it and the Sean Mac. The Butcher has taken the enemy vessel. So let's go ahead and send 60 crew members across. Break the ships apart. And we've taken the enemy vessel. Make full sail. We'll let the Libra action break free first. Then we'll send the Butcher in after. Sean Mac is a great angle here. Wind coming across from, uh, is that the starboard side? By the way, I love how, like, sailing ships' yards pivot and, and turn to pick up the wind. It seems to me that typically the wind directly off the stern of the ship is not a good thing because it kind of blocks, like, the rear sail will kind of block the front sail. So you kind of want it coming across the angle of the, of the ship to get max maximum speeds out of your ship. All right. Butcher, get going here which is the exact position that all of our ships are currently in. The Lieber took a fair bit of damage, so I don't know that we want to engage the enemy ships with it, but if we have to, we will. Sean Max lost, I think, seven crew members to this point. They're going for her sails. Walpool is... I think she's safe. I mean, I don't think there's any way the enemy's going to... Uh, I haven't been doing precise aiming. I suppose I could. But I haven't been. I believe when you right-click on a particular spot of the ship, your crew will aim precisely at that spot. Let's actually go for these guys. 
seeing as we're about to slide alongside the Libra. Cut in behind the wall pull. I didn't realize how slow this goddamn thing was. She's making 6.2 knots. Make full sail for the butcher. I want to board the Libra here, the lead enemy ship. So we have a couple of guns out of action on the Sean Max broadside here. Nice close in broadside, smashing up the Lieber pretty good here. A little bit slow, we'll speed her up a bit. Get the turn going here to get a, a nice parallel course. Come on, guys. Don't tell me they're faster than you. Speeds are matched. Distance still just a little bit too great. Don't quite have a parallel course. Try and board these two enemy ships here. Grappling irons are tossed. We're going too fast. Cut speed. Got the right angle here. All right, so they should begin boarding immediately. Three to one advantage in terms of crew. Fire right down the stern of the St. Eugenia. Boarding is underway. All right, we should be able to take all these enemy ships here. The Libra is inflicting a fair amount of casualties on our boarding party, but I think it's it's over. The San Eugenia could, in theory, come and help, but... Friendly fire, by the way, is definitely a thing that happens a lot in this fucking game. You're going to shoot my own ships, aren't you? Oh, nope. nope. So we've captured two of the enemy ships. The third is under heavy fire. Switch to grape. And board. Speed matched, distance not. We'll slow up a little bit. I think I think we've got what is she doing? Is she trying to angle in to go for the The enemy's armor, or that's what the, the red imp indicates here, is heavily reduced. So I'm thinking I believe that should make the enemy crew much more vulnerable to grape and other things like that. You see a crew shot here. We killed uh, several of them with that grape shot here. This little icon here represents their crew is basically, you know, suffering heavily. I assume morale-wise. So we'll go ahead and keep pounding them more from the Libra action. We'll get another stern rake here of grape. One, three... Well, it didn't say crew shock there, but I think they're still shocked up here, so they may they may surrender on their own, I guess. It's kind of getting outside the range of uh, of grape here. Raking down the length of the front of the ship. A couple more crew members killed. Oh, the, the crew shock looks like it's gone. Another round of another broadside of grape, although it's just outside our firing arc. So it didn't really accomplish a lot there. Walpole's almost to the safe zone. Sean Mack and Libra are both just chilling. They're taking a well-deserved break. OK, 
Right, you guys, you already, I already switched you to grape too. I didn't realize that. Really? Nothing? That whole broadside? You didn't, you didn't hurt anybody? Oh shit, it's on fire. That's not good. We might lose one of our prizes. Put the fire out, lads. I don't know if there's anything I need to do to put the fire out. Oh, there's a match speed mode? I didn't realize that. Okay, on the up roll, lads. I don't even think they've got enough crew left to take the wall pool and man their own ship. And the Libra action looks like your fire's out. The mission is over. Oh, she struck her colors. All right, so let's go ahead and take possession of her real quick. Before we finish the battle. Just want to make sure we actually get her. I don't know if I have to put troops ashore or, you know, on the ship or not. To, to get her. But I'll do it just to be sure. Prize crew, lads. Prize crew. By the way, prizes should be more valuable than they are in this game. Let's also get the... All right, there we go. So successful mission there. Three enemy ships. All three are taken by us. Captured. The enemy loses 201 of its crew, the entire crew. We lose 69 out of about 486, so not too bad in terms of casualties. We saved the wall pool. We took three enemy vessels. Uh, Leonard Skinner is promoted to sub-lieutenant, and Jonathan Philippot is promoted to lieutenant. We captured three enemy ships. We also managed to capture Sure 61 Spanish M1717s uh, and rescued some of our own weapons from our crews who were casualties. Yeah, but they should, I don't know, war, ships were freaking valuable back in the day. All right, so I'm assuming repair, repair. And then we've got three trophies. So we basically have choices. We can either add it to our fleet, which costs reputation. We've got 30, 37. If we add it to the fleet, then we can sell it. If we send it to the Admiralty, we gain reputation. But that's the weird thing to me is like I don't get any money for adding it to my fleet. That's kind of the frustrating thing to me. Like, there's no prize money then. So, why? Why? Um, selling prizes uses the market repair cost for max sale. You need two things maxed out. I'm sure it's a game balance thing, Ballistic. But I've read all of the Hornblower books. I've listened to all of the Arbory Matron books. And uh, I've also listened to all the Richard Belitho books. So I'm very much like, give me the damn prize money. <laughs> give me give me the way things work. Um, anyway. You would only send ships of the line to the Admiralty jet. It's just, it's kind of expensive from a uh, reputation perspective. We'll send one of them to the Admiralty, just so that way we only net out at three rep cost. So we've got two more. I think these are both unrated cutters. So if I wanted to go ahead and sell them now, if I bring them back here. What's the max crew on these guys? Is it 50? Those are a small crew. They're not even good for boarding. But I can get two grand for it. Which I guess is worth it. I'm 
So after the repair costs about 200, so it's about two grand profit for each. We really don't have the money to buy a fifth rate. As much as I would like to have a fifth rate, and I really think we should get a fifth rate, it's 25,000 bucks. The other thing I could have used the unrated ships for was some of those side quests too, right? Where you've got to dispatch a ship for a period of time. That's what I should have done. Can I undo that? Can I un can I undo selling? Nope. I got to pay the full price. That was a mistake. Ah. Ugh. All right. Um. I mean, we could buy the Phoenix feasibly, and then we could have two six rates, which would be better. Or we'd go back to the autosave, you think? Just load it back. All right, repair those. Add to fleet, repair. Add to fleet, repair. Send to Admiralty. All right. Sean Mack and uh, Butcher both are upgraded. We got 17 grand. Yeah, Sean Mack, but some of those missions have delays. Um, do I want the, the $1,000 for 198 prisoners? Or do I want two reputation for giving him back on parole. Reject the offer for now. Right, so, we, for example, this particular one only has a duration of one, but in some of the battles, I think they've got longer durations. Uh, so we need a captain for our troop ship. So I've got to assign him. Does anybody know what the red bannered thing is? These guys seem to be better. Are they like Patreon or early access supporters or something? James Arthur. Well, the Max crew. They're supporters. Okay, that makes sense. Um, needs troops. 320 men. No, we're not going to do that. We'll do 165, which is what we did before. Also, because we used veterans, we can upgrade these guys. Morale and efficiency, stamina and efficiency. Let's do stamina. So they fight better before they lose morale. So this troop ship is, is back up to, well, not its max weight, actually. But we spend so much money just keeping our, our, our troops, you know, quality up. Do you have any other weapons? Because we're out of land patterns. The sea service, but I don't... So the land pattern musket is... Considerably more efficient than the sea service. Slower reloader, though. Worse in melee. I think we'll keep that as is. Alright, so we need a minimal... I'm going to assign a minimal crew here. So... And I don't think I want to use the Spanish weapons for them. We can use the sea service. Why would that cost me money? I've already got it in the... Oh, no. I don't. It's 
Okay. So, and by the way, we paid for these crew members, which might feel like a waste, but we can actually pull these crew off the ship, put them into a pool that then we can use to assign re replacements to our other ships, which we lost later on. Also, we do need a little bit of more, a little bit more money. So what we could do is sell these, some of these weapons here that we have in our, in our armory. I don't think there's any scenario where I'm going to use more. Well, I don't know. Maybe I would. But I mean, I could sell these brass cannons too for three grand if I needed them. Sword and bayonet much better than just sword or just bayonet. Uh, we do have four pound naval guns, 18 of them. What, are, what, so what are these ships carrying? These guys are carrying six pounders also? Oh, shit. I could unmount them and sell them. <laughs> uh, let's not do that right now. All right, let's go back to the, the main screen. I don't know exactly how, if this duration means they won't be ready for the next turn or not. So I'm going to use these two new crews. So that's 71 if I do that. What if I use my primary crew? Oh, wow. 89% chance of success. But I don't know how the duration thing works. Again, duration one, I'm assuming it's back next stage. But 71% is still pretty good, so we'll do that. Although, what if we just do the Marines? That's actually worse. Right, we'll do the two cutters. Right, it's a sword and a bayonet. Sean Mac, I know. Dr. Grog, thanks for the follow. Dana Mill, thanks for the follow. Hunter Seeker, thanks for the follow. So that is in place. CTSS1230, thank you for the follow. So that's going to do it for this stage. Let's go ahead and move forward to the next one. The enemy commanders contact me and is offering to pay a ransom for his men, I guess. I could have gotten like 100 more before, but I'll, I'll take it. 10% reward modifier. We got 12 grand. What happened in that side mission? Oh, we can suffer casualties in that? We found a huge cave with an entire village living inside. Sadly, they have nothing to trade but fish. On the other hand, in our condition, it's nice to have a place to buy some food without paying the Spaniard tax. So, our two ships, one of them suffered medium damage. The enemy suffered light damage. I'm guessing they defeated us. It's not super clear to me. But they suffered light, we suffered medium. They lost three crew, we lost six. They lost one gun, we lost four. Thanks for the bit. It's pro council. Alright, so this particular phase has two battles and then a question mark battle. I succeeded on the side mission? That wasn't very clear. What did I get for it? Is that what this is? Just the reward modifier? You don't get to play the side missions, Jet. All right. Repair. Why aren't you guys aren't using those weapons, are you? You shouldn't be. You've got other weapons to use. Okay. So currently we've got 11,000 gold. We have two decent warships, a sixth and a seventh rate. They're kind of small, but they're not bad. Um, the Sean Max crew actually gained some experience, so we can give them a second trait here. So we can give them hand-to-hand -hand combat, better gunnery and boarding. We can give them gunners, better reload and accuracy. And we can give them rigging, better rotation speed and movement speed. I'm going to go with boarding because this crew is really going to be a boarding crew almost all the time. We're going to max that crew back out. 
We should also change these guys out to the sea service with musket and sword. Right? Oh, I don't have enough of those. That's musket bayonet. That's what they currently have. I thought there was a musket and sword bayonet. It's a sword bayonet. Oh. We have quite a few of them in the armory. It's substantially better at melee. So we'll go with that. Give your crew the, the weapons they need to fight. Why do I have to pay some? Oh, that's for the crew. Okay, and then the Butcher needs a few more crew members also. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this episode of Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail, a new game out by Game Labs, the developers behind uh, Ultimate General Civil War, Ultimate General Gettysburg, Naval Action, and several other games. Uh, this game just came out on Steam yesterday, and this was taken from a live stream from my Twitch channel. If you're interested in following those, check the link in the description. Uh, we streamed it last night, uh, and this was the second naval battle, the third battle, in the campaign of the Royal Navy. My understanding is the game has around 40 battles in each campaign, the Americans and the British. And then there is also a DLC for the Barbary Pirates uh, pack, which sort of ex adds adds a new American campaign uh, in the early 1800s. Um, yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts down below. And as always, until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.